Hi, this is Pastor Joe. I'd like to invite you to a very special event here at Parkway on Sunday evening, December the 4th at 6.30. We will be presenting the Ebenezer Experience with Joe Phillips. This will be a wonderful Christmas program for the whole family. Come and you will enjoy it. I'd like to speak to you this morning concerning a way of escape. A way of escape. Every one of us has a, a sense of survival. Every single one of us, there's inbred within us a sense of wanting to survive. You know, your adrenaline, that's what adrenaline is. Your adrenaline, you know, somebody that is sort of slow getting out of their chair, you let a real emergency occur and they can run and, and they can be strong because your adrenaline will kick in and you can do things you never thought you could do because of the adrenaline that will kick in. Well, let me speak to you for a few moments about a way of escape, a way of escape. Turn with us to Genesis chapter 6, verse 20. Genesis chapter 6, verse 20, and we'll read through the end of the chapter. I'd like to read more, but in the interest of time, we'll read three verses. Genesis chapter 6, verse 20. Of fowls after their kind and of cattle after their kind, of every creeping thing of the earth after his kind. Two of every sort shall come unto you to keep them alive. Two of every kind will come to you to keep them alive. And take unto thee all food that is eaten, and thou shalt gather it unto you, and it shall be food for thee and for them. Thus did Noah, according to all that God commanded him, so he did. There's a sense that something is about to happen. If you look at Iran, if you look at the situations... If you look at the situations with Russia, with Syria, with Iran, all of these factors are coming to play. Hollywood is churning out disaster movies. The Day After Tomorrow, Earthquake, Twister, Armageddon, great meteors are coming. There's one coming out now called, I think it's Arrival of people arriving from another planet. There's all sorts of things. And people are saying, how can we survive all that's going on in the world? God has painted a beautiful picture of survival. He has painted the most beautiful picture of survival that you could have. He has taken the gospel and he's put it in a story, an illustrated story of the gospel message of Jesus Christ and of the hope that it can give you for your life. The gospel message, the ark of Noah is an illustrated sermon. It says everything that needs to be said in plain, simple language. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 21 says, Which also 
after a true likeness doth save you. It is a type. It is an illustration. It is the picture of salvation that is painted for you. The ark was a miniature world. Do you see? It was a miniature world that was going from an old world of judgment, an old world of death, an old world that was passing away. It was a miniature world that was going to a new world, a world of life, a world of new beginnings, a world of hope. The ark was a new world. It was not a ship. It had neither sails nor oars. It didn't have a steering wheel. You know, the ark, they didn't have any steering wheel. There was no bridge for Noah to... Where's Noah? He's up on the bridge. No. He had no bridge. No steering. Nothing. It was just a float designed to preserve life and to carry it from one world to another. Well, what, what are we talking about? Well, first of all, First of all, it was voluntary. It was voluntary. He said, two of every kind shall come to you. Can you imagine Noah? Think with me for a minute. What if he was trying to catch all of these animals? What if he's, have you ever seen that show? What is the show? The Dirtiest Jobs, is that it? He would have been on that show. He would have said, hey, I've got the worst job in the whole world. Some buffalo's out here. And he says, come on. Runs and jumps on its back. And the buffalo takes off. He's holding on for dear life saying, come on, come on. No. He didn't, he didn't go up to the, to the ants and say, come on, come on. And they go a different way. They, he didn't do that. Two of every kind and seven of the clean animals shall come unto you. God is not going to drag you in. He's not going to take you. But Jesus says, come unto me, all ye who are weak and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He stood at Jerusalem. He said, how oft? Would I have gathered you under my wing? But you would not. He calls unto people. He says, come unto me. He says, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. I call you my friends because I have chosen you and I call you to come unto me. Praise the Lord. The divine urge. You've, you've seen the conviction. You've seen the revival service. You've seen people, the, the Holy Spirit calling, wooing, tugging at heart strings. Uh, you've seen it. You've, seen, you've felt that call yourself. You felt it. You responded uh, to an altar. You came and you wept before God. There was one revival meeting, one gentleman who was at church about once a month. He would come in and come with some family and he would come and, and the pastor saw him. And the pastor saw him gripping the pew and holding it really tight. He said, wow, the Holy Spirit's really working on that guy. The Holy Spirit's really calling him. And he went back to him and he said, hey, would, would you like to come forward? And the gentleman said, no. He said, well, I see, that you're, I see that you're moved. I see that something's talking to you. He said, no. He said, the Holy Spirit has always dealt with me. He's always called me. He's always, but I can't feel anything now. There's no call. There's no tug. There's nothing calling to me. The Bible says my spirit will not always strive with man. There comes a day 
when the door will close, when time shall be no more for you, there comes that moment when the door is going to close. Elijah was in the desert. God sent ravens. Ravens don't normally go in the desert, but God sent the ravens to feed Elijah there in the desert. Uh, a voluntary, a voluntary thing they came because they were called. They were called of God. How many of you were called? Second, a change took place. A change took place. Something happened when they got in the ark. They had a pen, and the lions and the tigers were in this one, and the lambs were right next to them. Don't you know those lions? That we're having lamb chops for dinner tonight. No, a change took place. The lion and the lamb lay down together. The snake, Noah picked one up and said, oh no, stay in this pen and here, put him back in. It didn't bite. A change. What's going to happen in the animal kingdom? In the, in the new kingdom, the lion and the lamb are going to lay down together. The snake will not bite. Uh, nothing. There is nothing. I want to tell you, when Jesus Christ calls you into the ark, there will be a change in your nature. There will be a change. You'll have a new nature. The Bible says old things are passed away. All things have become new. You will have a new nature. The Bible says you will become a new creature in Christ Jesus. That's why I told Nicodemus, he said, Nicodemus, you got to be born again. And he said, well, I can't born again. How can I be born again? He said, no, Nicodemus, you've got to be born of the Spirit. You've got to be born of the Holy Spirit with a new life and a new spirit in you. The old things are passed away. The liar doesn't tell lies anymore. The one who's addicted is no longer addicted. Uh, no longer. Now all things are made new. And you're a servant of Jesus Christ. And you're glad because your name is written down in the Lamb's book of life. Uh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, well, it was the work of a man. The ark was the work of a man. His sons helped him. But Noah pretty much built it. It was built by a carpenter. Noah didn't just go out there one day and God said, Noah, I want you to close your eyes. I got a big surprise for you. Okay, poof, whoa, what an ark. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Hey, this is right here. No, he said, Noah, here's the plan. Here's the plan, a pattern. I want you to do it exactly the way I tell you to, and get to work. And Noah said, whoa, that's a big boat. But he got to work. 120 years he worked, and he worked, and he worked. A carpenter hammering on the nails. He worked at it. He did it according to the design. But you know what? There was a greater carpenter. There was Jesus Christ. There was Jesus who was born of a virgin. He was God, but He was man. He was fully God. Philippians said, who thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but voluntarily made Himself of no reputation and took on the form of a servant, the greater carpenter, Jesus Christ. He did the work. And it's in His work uh, that we're saved. Uh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, he made the ark according to the divine design. Jesus said, I can do nothing of myself. I can't do anything. But whatever I hear of the Father, that's what I speak. Uh, Jesus at 3 o'clock on a Friday afternoon, He hung there and He said, it is finished. 
It is finished. The price has been paid for the sin of the whole world. The ark has been built. It has been built according to the pattern that you have given me. And it is available for whosoever will let him come into the ark of forgiveness. Amen. Praise the Lord. It is finished. My hope is in what Christ did. It's His work alone. It's not Jesus plus something. It's not, hey, I believe in Jesus and I'm keeping 50 rules. No. He didn't say Jesus plus 50 rules. He said it's in Jesus. It's in Jesus. It's in Jesus. Jesus is the answer. Whoever comes into the ark, whoever comes into the ark of God, they can find safety and they can find hope. They can find hope. It's in Christ alone. The ringing sound of the hammer. Can you hear it in the valley as Noah hammers ring and it rings out and it rings out forgiveness It rings out hope. It rings out escape. It rings out that same hammer. That same ringing was at Calvary when they drove the spikes into his hands and into his feet. And every time the hammer hit the nail, it rang out forgiveness. It rang out hope. It rang out a new beginning for all who will come to Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. No oar. Fourthly, no oar pulled this ark. It was God directed. It was God ordained. He was God breathed. Noah didn't have a, a map. He didn't say, now Noah, on the third year, the third month, you're going to be doing this. No, Noah just trusted God. He trusted God. He said, God, you said do it. I don't care if it takes 120 years. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do exactly what you said. I'm going to build it your way. You may not see the end from the beginning. You, You may be hammering them something and you say, this doesn't look like it makes any sense. But I want to tell you, God has a way of bringing it all together in your life and you will see his hand if you keep hammering. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. John 3, 8 says, The wind bloweth where it listeth, and you hear the sound thereof, but cannot tell where it comes nor where it goes. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Because he's led of the Spirit. Well, next fifth, they did with Noah. Everybody who was in that ark was there because of Noah. They were all there. His family, his sons, his daughter-in-laws, they were all there because of Noah. What about us? We're in the ark because of Jesus. We're here this morning because of Jesus. Jesus is the answer to the world's problems. It's not the Republicans. It's not the Democrats. It's not the Independents. Jesus Christ is the answer today for everything. Praise the Lord. Jesus is the answer We enter in because of the completed work of Jesus Christ. Because of Christ. Oh, it was pitched within and without. Now that's what he told Noah. He said, Noah, make sure you pitch it within and without. Why do you pitch it within? You pitch it within so that those who are inside the ark can see the covering. And God on the outside can see the covering. What does the word atonement mean? Does anybody know? To cover. To cover. On the day of atonement, 
the priest would go in once a year. He would sprinkle the blood. Did you know how he went? He would sprinkle the blood. And he would walk in the blood. He couldn't approach God other than through the shed blood of Jesus. He would sprinkle it. And he would walk. He would sprinkle the blood. He would walk. And when he came to the the sacrifice, he would sprinkle it on the seat of atonement. He would sprinkle it on the ark of the covenant. He would sprinkle the blood right there. How, How else could he come How else? It was through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. He said, Lord, only through your blood. I enter through the blood. I sprinkle the blood upon the altar, upon the ark. I sprinkle your blood. The atoning death. The atonement. In Hebrews, he says... Sacrifice and offering you did not desire. You didn't desire any more sacrifice. You did not desire any more offerings. But lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. I come to do your will, O Lord. There is one door. Six, there's one door. Wait a minute. That was, that was silly, wasn't it? Rex, that was, that was silly, wasn't it? How do you make a boat that big? You make a boat that big and you put one door in it. I mean, what architect would draft a boat, a huge one, and have one door? That's silly. you got to have a lot of doors. People can go in. They can go out. you got to have a right. God said one door. One door. But God... One door. There's one way to heaven. There's one way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. Jesus said that. He said, I am the door. He said, I am the door. You can't come in. He said, I am the way. You know, there are universalists here. Not maybe in this church, but in Macon, we have a universalist church. And they make a fine argument. They say, we're all going to heaven. We're all going to heaven. We're on different roads. We're all going to heaven on different paths, different roads. We're all going to wind up at the same place. That's not what Jesus said. Jesus was not politically correct. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father but by me. If any man tries to come a different way, he is a thief and a robber, and he will not be admitted. He said, I am the door that you can go in and come out. Uh, You can worship You can have eternal life uh, if you will come to me. He said, I am the way. I am the way. Broad. Why does the Bible say broad is the way to destruction? And many there be that find it. But narrow is the road to eternal life. And few there be that find it. God shut the door. Nobody could open it. He shut the door. That's what it says. It says God shut the door. Nobody could open it. You know what that means? No purgatory. Well, you say, but but you shouldn't say that about... I'm telling you what the Bible says. When you die, your last chance is over. Your last chance is over. That's right. Praise the Lord. You can't get out. Hell is eternal. It's a real place. Jesus spoke more about hell than any other character in the Bible. He said it's real. He said it's, it's a real place and it's going to touch you in a real way. 
There's no escape from hell. Over and over it says, and all who were outside the ark were lost. Seventh, there's one window. Oh man, Becky would have hated that. She would have said, what? You can't put one window in this ark? One, one, we've got to have a, we need one here. We need one here. We need one here and here. We need lots of light. God said, one window, one window, looking straight up. Why? Because there was one window when the storms of life are raging, when they're crashing against the sides of your little boat, and you're saying, oh God, are we going to survive? There's one place to look up. There's one place to say, thank God, you're in total control and you're in charge. My hope is in you and I'm looking nowhere else. Uh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, you're not to focus on the storms or the death and destruction around you, but focus upon the mighty God. Eighth, no craft ever endured such punishment. Heaven unleashed the fury of heaven. The fury of, I don't know, but one, one minister thinks that all the demons of this world gathered at Calvary. If they did, all the demons of hell gathered around this boat and they were determined to sink it, to destroy it, to end it. They were all saying, listen, all the fountains of the deep broke up and water came up and the rain came down and the ark was tossed and torn and thrown and it was there that the waters came flowing in. But you know what? The ark weathered every single storm, every battering, everything that came against it, the ark weathered everything. It weathered. Hebrews 11 says, Noah moved with fear, prepared an ark. Christ endured the fury of hell. He overcame. He said, it is finished. The battle is over. It is finished. There'll be no more war. It is finished. It is finished. Christ is the victor and He's won and you can be in Christ this day. Praise the Lord.